So then once again, welcome everyone to this afternoon session after the lecture yesterday and the last session uh, for today and also for me here in Le Havre. Um, I'm still Matthias Magdowski and today, so at first I will share my screen and I will share the whole screen and then there should be my slides. So after talking yesterday about introduction to the topic and modeling of the motor and doing all these measurements with my equipment, and today I would like to introduce you and that's why we are also in this computer room here so that each and every one of you has a, has a computer to do the simulations on your own into uh, simulating with LT Spice. So before we actually start, I have a short survey as yesterday. So it would be great if you can take your cell phones and scan this QR code. And luckily it's not so super sunny outside anymore because the projector in the room is not super powerful and uh, today in the morning it was very challenging to scan the QR code for the students but today but but in the afternoon now it, it seems to work a little better so the question is how much experience do you have with LT Spice if it does not work you can also shortly come to the front if you like and so the possible answers is I've never heard of it before or I know that it exists, but I've never really used it, or I've maybe used it once or twice, but not too much into detail. I've used it a couple of times, or I've often used it and I have some great experience with it. And there are no more cell phones. So how, how do you call this in, in France? Telephone portable. Okay. In Germany, we say Handy. 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 So, so. What happens here? The stream crashed, but there I'm back again. Um, okay, so let me let me share my screen once again. The technology today is um, certainly against me. So I will refresh the results and so it's including all the voices and all the poll results from the three seminars before. And there yeah, one student said, I've used it a couple of times already. Um, and one person said, and now one additional person said, I've used it once at least. And everyone else said, I've, I've never heard of it before. So then it's maybe a good idea to give some introduction into this. So I will um, skip back to my slides and tell something about this program LT, LT Spice. Oh, I'm sorry. So the abbreviation LT stands for linear technology. And linear technology, you can see the logo here, is a large manufacturer, has been a large manufacturer of electronic components, semiconductor devices, diodes, transistors, comparators, operational amplifiers and stuff. And the, the word spice in English, of course, also, you know what spice is, what, what you put, put in the food to make it tasty. And in this case here, it's some kind of acronym or some kind of backronym like like laser is, uh, you know, what from a laser pointer or from James Bond laser, does any one of you know what laser means? Because it's a similar kind of acronym or, or backronym. Um, so laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, exactly. And so the SPICE here stands for simulation program 
with integrated circuit emphasis. So it's a simulation program for circuits with some amplification might be um, in there. And so there are several variants of the SPICE, and this is the one from Linear Technology. And Linear Technology has been bought a couple of years ago by another large manufacturer of electronic components and semiconductor devices named Analog Devices. And so now you can download this LT SPICE on the website of Analog Devices. They did not rename it because the name was already so popular. And um, yeah, if you want to use the program on your computer at home or on your portable computer, you can just download it on the website. In the computer lab here, uh, you could also download it, but I think you, you could not install it because you don't have administrative rights on the computer to install such a program here. And that's why I shared this cloud link with you in advance. So this program is available for all common operating system. It will also run under Windows 11. Uh, under recent versions of macOS in Linux, you have to somewhat emulate it. And it's kind of small. So as you have noticed, the um, zip file that you downloaded was just around 50 megabytes. So it's, it's a kind of small program. Um, still, it takes some time to unzip on your computer because there are more than 10,000 files in there. And um, so this somehow belongs to the to the business model because it's a freeware, it's a software that you can use without any license. Uh, in contrast, for example, to MATLAB, uh, if you want to use MATLAB, the university has to have a license or you need, you need to pay for a license. And so this LT Spice, you can use it even for commercial purposes as a company, you could, you could use it for free. And their business model is that all the components that analog devices and linear technology and so on that they produce and that they sell, you will find models of this in the library of this program. And that's why there are so many files in there because they have so many components. And so the idea is if you want to build a circuit, um, then you might simulate it with the components of analog devices or linear technology. And you say, hey, it's working so nice in the simulation. Now I will also buy the components from this manufacturer and then they will earn some money. So they give out the program kind of, kind of as an advertisement for free. But uh, it's, it's not open source, it's closed source. So you cannot really look into the program how it does the simulations or what exact calculations are done. And it's a little bit of a pity for research because sometimes for research, you really want to know exactly how some calculations are done. But no one knows, or only the manufacturer uh, knows. Um, you somehow have to trust the calculations there. Um, this is the person who is programming this or maintaining this. Um, his name is Mike Engelhardt. He's also quite popular and very famous always with this head. And he also does workshops or gives seminars like this one. And they um, often advertise these workshops or seminars making a little fun of this that spice in English also is the, the, the spice, the thing that you use to make the food tasty. So they advertise it with cooking with LT Spice featuring MasterChef Mike Engelhardt um, from my point, uh, quite, quite good humor. So then why I'm telling you this and why I'm explaining about simulations, have you done simulations before? with mechanical engineering programs simulating some other motors or stuff? No, but you have. Okay, and this was like only computer edit design or was it also a machine that was rotating or doing something, some, some moving object? Okay, some kind of virtual machine. Okay, how it moves and how it operates. And okay, excellent. Uh, with Katia. Okay, so I, this is some, I think, finite element uh, method program, if I, if I recall correctly. So that's uh, the underlying mathematical method. And I know that you've also used MATLAB, right? Or in other classes, you use MATLAB. So if you have some experience with MATLAB and maybe already with other programs, um, what is what is the problem of all these simulations or what is the problem if you use 
a tool to simulate something, a software um, to do some kind of analysis or calculation. What's, what's the problem if you use MATLAB? We have lots of, lots of complicated commands and so on. Uh, and uh, so the, the, the problem of every simulation and of every software tool that you use is this bullshit in, bullshit out principle or garbage in, garbage out. So the computer is always correct or the computer is always calculating correctly, but you have to give or you have to explain the computer the problem that you want to solve in the correct way. And then the computer will do something and will give you some result. And you, would, you also need to be able to interpret the result in the correct way. So if you, if you don't explain the computer the problem correctly, computer will still do something and calculate something, but the result will be rubbish, will be, uh, will be not useful. And so the result will not be useful. And um, sometimes also it happens that you give the computer the, your problem correctly, computer does the correct calculation, but you interpret the results in the wrong way. So you need to be aware of how to explain the computer your problem and how to interpret the results. The, the computer is always right, the problem is often the person in front of the computer. Okay, so um, we will see this in a second. Uh, one, one important issue is, so now if we are using the software and if we want to give numbers into the software, it's, it's some American software. So as a decimal separator, they use a dot and not a comma. That's, that's the thing. Uh, and so all these expressions here mean the same. So if we want to have a one kilo ohm resistor, we could say thousand, thousand point one, one E three, one kilo, everything is the same here. And um, so it's not case sensitive. So a, a capital M, which is usually the abbreviation for mega, uh, or one, 10 to the power of six, um, this program would be interpreted as milli, so you need to write one meg if you want to have one mega uh, ohm, for example. One F for femto is also wrong, um, or no, one F for farad is wrong. It would be one femto, so just give one. And if you want to say something in micro, then you can directly use also this new character there. Okay, so then let's start with some example. And so now on your computer, you should have all download the zip file, unzipped it, and you should find here these, this, exe, this executable program. And I will also try to locate it on my computer here. It should be in this folder. And so you should have a folder that somehow looks like this. And now you run this exe here, this executable file. And then you should get a window that looks like this, showing some, I think, some old machinery of uh, Archimed. And I will, you can leave it on full screen. I will move it to one side. And uh, on the other side, I will shortly put this folder. And then I will try to locate my slides once again, exit the full screen mode here and put this slides also to the other side. And oops and zoom in here a little bit so that we can have that we can see here the circuit that we would like to simulate and here the simulation program and maybe i will move this a little bit to this side and to this side so that oops, i have more space here okay so if we want to do a simulation and if we want to have a new schematic you have to press this button here in the upper left corner that opens up a new schematic and then this uh, strange background picture should disappear and you should get a plain gray background in this LT Spice window. And so then um, here you find the resistor. This is the American symbol for the resistor so you can push on, press on this, and then you get a resistor that you can place somewhere 
um, inside or on, on the schematic. So I will place it somewhere here. And then you can see it automatically numbers and you could place a second resistor and a third resistor and so on. If you want to exit um, this menu here, you have to press escape on your keyboard and then this resistor will be gone. Okay, so we have a resistor. Resistor could be found here. Now we need a voltage source. We need this one here, our, our battery or my power supply yesterday in the experiment. Uh, unfortunately, there is no symbol here for the power supply, but here there is something, I think in the, in the recording, it will be hidden by my camera window that says component. You also find this here under edit, and then there should be also something uh, like component. And it can be also reached by the shortcut F2 on the keyboard. So if you go to this component, a new window will pop up. And in this window, you can search for voltage, which, which will be because it starts with re, uh, right at the end. And you can see this is the voltage source that we use. So now we can have a voltage source and place the voltage source somewhere here. Then we could place the second one, but we don't need the second one. We only need one. So once again, I press escape on the keyboard. So. Everyone got that far that you have a resistor and a voltage source on your computer? Okay. So what would be the next step then? What would what would you need to do? To continue with the simulation? What is missing? Wires. Wires, exactly. We need to have wires. We need to wire this together and connect the components. And the wiring tool can be found here on the top with a small pencil or pen. And so if you click on this pen, you get this crosshair. And with this, you can wire the stuff. So I will draw a wire on the top. And you can see how it nicely snacks and connects to the, to the components. And that these small launch pads or soldering pads will disappear if we have a proper connection. And if uh, I want to, if I'm finished with drawing and want to get back to the usual mouse key, once again, I press escape on the keyboard. Okay, so now I've, I have wired everything together. Um, and maybe another hint that is quite useful for this program, if you, you can zoom in and out and sometimes it happens, yeah, especially with when using this wire tool that you, um, that it automatically scrolls somewhere and you get somewhere lost in your, in your circuit. Um, so then it's very useful and handy just to press the space bar on the keyboard because this will bring you back to some, let's say home view, showing you the full circuit that you have drawn so far. Okay, so we have a circuit. Uh, we have wired it. What is still missing before we can do a simulation? Say again. Yeah, we. I mean, we need to give these components values. We need to say how much volts should the voltage source have how much resistance should the resistor have? And this can be done by clicking on the components with the alternative mouse button. So usually the right mouse button, if you click on the voltage source with the right mouse button, a window opens up where you can set um, a DC value for the source. And I will set it, for example, to 12 volts. You can select any other value if you like, um, like in the, um, car battery, the voltage, and say OK. And the same can be done for the resistor. So also here the alternative mouse button and then this resistance can be changed to also some arbitrary value. And I will, for example, take 0 0.5, some kind of small resistance there um, for the resistor. And So now we have 
the elements, we have wired them together, we have values. Now we could start a simulation. And so um, to do this, you press on the, on the button here with the small running person, because this has run. Uh, with this, you can run the simulation. And then I need to scroll up here a little bit in my slides because the simulation that we will do at first is the last option here in this menu, which is called DC operating point. So from this menu, you select this one here. Um, DC operating point, and as a small explanation here, it computes, it calculates the DC, the direct current operating point of this circuit of this um, model. And this corresponds to if you would do a measurement with a multimeter. Remember yesterday I had this yellow multimeter from Fluke or Fluke. And so with such a multimeter, you also measure one value for current, one value for voltage. And this is also what you get from this type of simulation. You get one value for each current and voltage inside the circuit. So we select this option and press OK. And then um, something happens here, this OP for operating point. But uh, unfortunately, not so good. We get, we get some error message. And the error message says, this circuit, our circuit here, does not have a conduction path to, um, to ground. And we should mark one node or flag one node with ground. And to do this, the ground symbol can be found here on top. So this small triangle, this is the ground symbol. And so you click on this, then you get this ground. And now we, we will place the ground somewhere here at the bottom. You, can, you could directly connect it to the line. I will connect it somewhere here or place it somewhere here and then use some additional wire to connect this ground symbol to my circuit. And now I will um, make this window here a little smaller and move it somewhere here uh, to make it better visible what happens here. So if you look in this in the lower left corner of the simulation program somewhere where my mouse um, arrow is right now. Um, that will, the, the program will usually show some useful information. So now it shows this is ground. This is the ground node. And this is some other node. And these nodes are automatically numbered. So this is the node 001. And it also says, for example, right click to edit this voltage source, right click what we have already done to edit this resistor. So now we just rerun the simulation again. But before we do so, or before I do so, I would like to uh, quickly calculate what should happen in this circuit. So we have a voltage of 12 volt and we have a resistor of 0 0.5 ohm. So how large should be the current in the circuit or how should, how could we calculate the current? Um, you remember the formula that we had yesterday for Ohm's law for the, what happens at some resistor? Yeah, U equals R times the current. And so now we want to have the current. So how do we rearrange this equation? Exactly. I equals U divided by R. And so we have 12 volt divided by uh, one and a half ohm. Ohm is volt divided by ampere. So the volt will cancel. We will get ampere. And uh, you divide by a fraction by multiplying with a fraction. So 12 divided by one and a half is... No, 20, 24, exactly. Yeah, so we should get 24 ampere. And so we can check if I run the simulation by clicking once again on the small person that is running. 
And then we get the result here. I can place it somewhere here. And then we see, okay, the voltage at our node uh, on top, which was the node 0, 0, 1, is 12 volts for sure, because our source says it should be 12 volts. And the current through the resistor is 24 ampere. And then there's also the current calculated that runs through the voltage source, and it's minus 24 ampere. Why, why, why do we have a minus there? What could be the reason? It's, it's the polarity, it's the opposite direction. So um, the, the current in the resistor is meant to go downwards in our case, and the current in the voltage source is also meant to go downwards from the plus to the minus sign uh, through the source. And this is, of course, opposite directions if they both uh, point downwards. Okay, so this looks meaningful, this looks good. And uh, so once again, if you now hover with the mouse on the circuit after the simulation, and once again, check this lower left corner here of the simulation program, then you will see that there's also some information uh, given that in the DC operating point, this uh, the, the current there is minus 24 ampere and the power dissipation is 288 or would be 288 watts, but minus. So it means the source is outputting this power and here the power goes into this resistor and the current there is also is already uh, calculated 24 ampere. So it's it's a little bit like I've said, like the measurement with the multimeter, if you remember yesterday, for each component, uh, for each node, we can, we can measure current. We get one value for current and one value for voltage. Okay, so then let me delete uh, everything here that I have written so far. And let's go to the next problem or to the next simulation and the next simulation or is uh, are there are there questions is uh, everyone arrived at this position here that you see this result that you see this window because otherwise i might help you every, every, everyone fine everything okay does anyone need some some help no okay then let's continue. So the next thing is we want to do we want to do the same circuit. We want to look at the same circuit, but we want to do what is written here transient analysis. And to do this, to change this setting, go to a different, you go to simulate and you go to edit simulation command. And if I click on this, the, the this window once again shows up and now I can go to transient analysis and I need to set some time here. So once again, you go to simulate, you go to edit simulation command as it's written here. And then we, we change this analysis to transient and you, we have to give some time now how long transient analysis means analysis simulation as a function of time. And we just need to tell the program how long the simulation should run. And I say one second. Uh, you could also say something else. Um, so we will we will run the simulation over one second. Oops. Uh, I've clicked something. Hopefully it will still work. Yeah. Okay. So um, guten Tag also to Green Bane's Ecke in, in, in the chat. Um and I will click OK. And then something new will appear here. Um, this will disappear. This OP will be commented out. Now we do a transient simulation over one second. And once again, you go there by clicking on simulate, edit simulation command, and then change the setting to transient, go to one or insert a one and click OK. And then it should look like this. And the transient simulation now does <coughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a simulation as a function of time. <clears throat> so it's, if you remember yesterday, it's what I have done 
with the measurement with the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope measured current and voltage or usually measures voltage as a function of time. And so now if, if I click run, um, some new window will appear and I will make the window a little larger once again. And once again hit here that I want to tile them horizontally. Um, and maybe I will put, no, I will, I will leave it like this for a second. So now a new window popped up and you can see that this window, that the X axis, the horizontal axis is a time axis. Um, I can shortly, the projector in the room is not that good, so I will shortly uh, switch switch the windows. Yeah, so that the um, plot is on top. So you can clearly see now we have a time axis and the time axis runs over one second, the time of our simulation. And now I will switch the windows once again uh, to have this on top. And now if you, I will enlarge the circuit a little bit by pressing the space bar. So now if you hover the mouse, if you move the mouse over some wire, you see that the mouse turns into another symbol. And does the symbol remind you of something? How does it look like? What should it be? Remember my measurement instruments yesterday? It was this, this voltage probe. Uh, that was also uh, red, this high voltage probe. So this is a voltage probe. And with this voltage probe, we can measure voltage at some position. And the voltage will be always with respect to the ground node. So if I click on this, uh, click here with this voltage probe, it will measure like if I would do a measurement with some oscilloscope, we can measure the voltage at this node. And then a line will appear in the diagram. And of course, it's a DC voltage. Nothing changes. It's a constant voltage. So we get a constant curve there for the voltage measured with this voltage probe. And if I move the mouse over to some element, to this voltage source, for example, or to the resistor, uh, once again, the mouse arrow, arrow changes into something. And how does this look like? Remember my instruments from yesterday? From the experiment? So I, I also used the, the French names. This was the, uh, the voltage probe was from Le Croix. Le Croix. And this was... This is the current probe, this current clamp that would, would uh, uh, open up. You could put it around a wire, clamp it together, and then it would measure the current going through this wire via the magnetic field. So this is exactly such a current clamp here. And the current clamp was from also another French company, Chauvin Arnoux, if you remember yesterday. So with this virtual current clamp, we can measure current. So if I click on this, a second line will appear. These lines are now perfectly on top of each other uh, because it's also, of course, if we have a constant voltage, if we have a constant resistance, we also get a constant current. And the current is 24 ampere. The voltage is 12 volt. Uh, everything perfectly makes sense. So, okay. Uh, a comment to the chat, je ne peux pas parler de français. So this, I, I don't understand what is written there, but it's, it's, it's probably good. Okay, so everyone, everyone arrived at this position. Everything, everything clear so far? You all got to this place? Somewhere, some, someone, some problems? Everything fine? Okay, I will, I will, I will do a quick check. I will do a quick check and check. So this, this looks somehow good. This looks also good. This looks excellent. Uh, this also looks good. And here, here you are still checking. It's somehow self-checking for the problem. Uh, oh, this looks uh, empty. Ah, but you, at least you managed to open up the computer. But yeah, and this is, this problem is if it's not, if, if it's not properly unzipped. I think 
So I'm not sure I would. So we can check what happens if you open it up once again, but uh, I think this does not, oh, where's the mouse, here's the mouse. Um, yeah, it, it's not, not properly installed. So I would just suggest to, and it's maybe because of this, um, because it's on the on the web, uh, on on the, on the network drive. So I would copy it to here and unzip it here once again. Okay. Okay, and this looks also good, right? Yes, but we don't have the measurements. Yeah, but because you need to, I don't, I don't find the mouse button. Oh, there it is. There it is. Because you need to rerun, and then it will appear. And then you have the measurement here and there, and also the, the current and voltage. And there it also works, right? Okay, excellent. So. Then we can go and we can continue with the next step in the simulation. And the next step is we will replace the resistor with some inductor. So now I want to remove the resistor here and replace it by some inductor. To remove the resistor, you can use these scissors here. So you activate the scissors by clicking on this button in the menu. And then you get the mouse turns into small scissors and with this you can remove the resistor and then you press escape once again on the keyboard to get rid of these scissors that you don't need anymore and then you find the inductor here on in the, um, on the top uh, it might be hidden in the stream or in the recording so you also find it here under edit and inductor or you press l on the keyboard and then you get the inductor and the inductor has the same footprint, let's say, as the resistor. So it should nicely fit in the space there and you can just click and then it should be connected. And then once again, we need to give this inductor a certain value. So I once again use the, the right mouse button. Um, also in the lower left corner somewhere here, it says, use um, right click uh, on this L to change it. And I will change the inductance to the same value that I had before for the resistance to 0 0.5. In this case, not Ohm, but of course, Henry. Henry. No, I think it's Henry. So then it's already this circuit. So before I click on run now, I would shortly try to discuss with you what should happen and hello to uh, Roger taking in the chat. Uh, I really appreciate it. So I will activate my drawing pen here once again and maybe take a color that is better visible, maybe this blue. So do you remember the formula that we had for this inductor that we discussed yesterday? So uh, what would happen at some inductor? What was this law of induction? So the formula looked like that we have the voltage and the voltage was equal to the inductance times, not the current itself, because then it would be a similar to the resistor, but uh, if you remember yesterday to the time derivative of, this, of the current. You remember the formula from yesterday? Okay, so now let's think about this formula. So in our circuit, in our model, we have a fixed voltage. We have a constant voltage, 12 volt. And we have a constant or fixed value of this inductance, uh, 0 0.5 Henry. So if the voltage is fixed in, inside this equation, and if the inductance is fixed inside this equation, 
what should happen to this term or what should be valid for, for the whole derivative here? If this is constant and if this is constant, what should happen to this? Don't think it's too complicated. You have, I mean, this is, at the end, this is, this is a number. This is some, some value. So you, have, you multiply one value with another value, and then get, you get a result. Yeah, you do multiplication. <coughs> and the result is constant. It's a fixed value. And one of the factors is a fixed value. It's a constant value. So what must be valid or what? properties must this other factor have? It, it must be fixed too. It must be a constant value too. If this is constant and this is constant, then this must be also constant. It cannot change. Would be would be very strange if it does. Right? Okay. So then we agree on that this time derivative of the current is constant. Okay, so what does it mean for the current then? You have a function where the time derivative is constant, is a constant. So what is then the function? So this term here, this time derivative is constant. What, what, for which type of function is this valid? Or what does what does derivative means in a graphical way, in a geometric way? If you calculate the derivative of a function, what does it mean? Yeah, it's it's the slope of the curve. It's the rate of change of the curve. Okay, so now we have a function where the slope is constant. The rate of change is constant. So what type of function do we get then? A linear function. We should get a linear function for the current. Yeah? If, if, if this current here, if, if the current, so let's, let's draw a quick schematic. If the current over time, so this is the time, if the current does something like this, linear increase, then the slope, the rate of change is the same each and everywhere. The, the rate of change is constant because we have a linear function. Okay, so this is what we would expect. So now let's hit this run button and see what we get. So at the moment we just get the voltage. So I will also click on this element to get the current. But what do we see? We don't see a linear function, right? We see a constant function. So this is exactly now, we have now exactly observed this garbage in, garbage out principle. We have done something wrong. Uh, we, are, we are missing a certain setting at the program, at the simulator. So we need to go back to our simulation settings. So I will go to simulate and once again, edit the simulation command. And if you press this, you, you uh, get back to this window. And now I will activate this last option here, which says skip initial operating point solution. Because unfortunately what the simulator does here, it calculates something like the final value. Uh, if we would, charge and charge and charge and charge this inductor. And if this linear slope finally would reach an end due to some, let's say, um, they're not really rounding mistakes, but um, some, some small resistance that is included in the inductance here. Uh, that's why yeah, we see, you see we reach a current of not 12 amperes, there's a small k here. We, we reach a current of 12 kilo amperes. And this is because this inductor model, I can show you in a second, this inductor model includes 
a series resistance of one milliohm, and that's why we get this 12 kilo ampere. Okay, so we add this option here, uh, say okay, then this is added here, this use initial condition. Yeah, and if you check, here it says the series resistances defaults to one milliohm, and that's why we get this 12 kilo amperes. Okay, so I press okay, I rerun the simulation. Ah, and now this is looking good. Now finally we get the linear increase uh, for the current that would be expected exactly due to this formula due to our law of induction that we have here. So once again, everything perfectly makes sense. If you use the program right, yeah, this, this small check mark somewhere was missing. Um, otherwise you don't get the, the, the exact result. Okay, so let me delete my annotations here once again. And let's go to the next problem. And the next example is looking like this one here. So now we would like to add the resistor once again. So I will, I will zoom out a little bit and find the resistor. And now we need to place the resistor somewhere here. But how to do it? It's, it's, in, a, it's in the wrong direction, right? We need to move or we need to rotate the resistor. And uh, once again, this, I will change the size of the program here a little bit. Um, once again, this, this lower left corner, if you look into this lower left corner here, this is helpful. If I try to add the resistor, then it says click or type control R to rotate and uh, type control E to mirror. So if you use control R on the keyboard, you can rotate the resistor. And I will rotate it three times. Uh, I will tell you later why I rotate it three times. But then it's like this, and then I can place it on a line. And if I place it on a line, it will automatically de delete the line in the background. So now we have the circuit that um, was already, uh, I will come to your question in a second, that already almost looks like the motor model, the electrical part that we discussed yesterday. So this is the. The power supply, the battery, and this is the inductance of the armature coil of the rotor coil, and this is the resistance of the rotor coil. And I will give this, now in my case here, a rather large resistance, maybe 10 ohms, something like this. And so then we can come to your question. How to turn with control R. Um, control R on the keyboard, and this hint how to, how to rotate is also displayed here in the lower left corner of the program. Okay, so now we have this resistance. And I said, it's almost the full electrical part of our motor model. So now if I, I will enlarge uh, the screen here a little bit once again. So now if I hit simulate, what, curve should I get? What curve would you expect now for the current? And I've also done this experiment yesterday. So if you if you remember the result from yesterday, how should what what should be the behavior, the time function of the current in this case, if we let's say charge an inductor over a resistor from a constant voltage source. And I think you, you, you named it yesterday. You, you said how the function looked like that. You could see yesterday the, um, on my oscilloscope screen how it looked like. Say once again. An exponential function, exactly. We should get some exponential function. So let's try if this works. I will hit the run button. And yes, there's our exponential function. This looked like what you have seen yesterday when I switched on the blocked motor 
uh, or the motor with a very small voltage so that it would yet not return, uh, not, not rotate, let's say. Okay. So the next step, and I think we won't do it uh, due to time uh, constraints, but let me enlarge my, uh, my slides once again. The next step would be, so this is already almost the electrical part of the motor. And now the next step would be, we would need to have a second circuit for the mechanical behavior. And the mechanical behavior also would need to have um, a voltage source. Remember, this was the controlled voltage source, a source that depends on the current here because the current on the electrical side, this, um, the, the current on the electrical side generated the torque on the mechanical side and then the torque um, accelerates the motor and we will get some speed of rotation. And the resistor here on the mechanical side is kind of the friction. If we would have some inductor on the mechanical side, this would be the inertia of the motor. And then the speed, the mechanical speed generates some back electromotive force in the motor. And so we would need to introduce these controlled sources. Um, but I think we still have some minutes left. Maybe, maybe we can do this uh, rather quick. So I will... Um, change the screen size once again, make this a little smaller and uh, try to move it here a little bit. So now we would like to have such, such a source here. Uh, and this is a voltage source that is controlled by a current. And you find this, you find this current controlled voltage source. Once again, if you go to edit and add component, and then it's called H source. So here you can read it's a linear current dependent or current controlled voltage source. And unfortunately, it's it has the same symbol. It's not the square as here. It's also just a round um, symbol, but I will place it somewhere here. But you can see it's not saying V for voltage, it's H because of this controlled source. And then I will add another resistor and place it somewhere here. So I really have the second circuit. I will quickly wire it together. Oops. And have this connection. And then I will say that the second resistor is just one ohm, so that it's easy to uh, think what the circuit does. Okay, and so now we would like what we would like to do is set the the electric current in the electric current in the motor would generate a torque on the mechanical side of the model. So this voltage here should now depend on the current in this circuit. And to, to connect these two circuits to let the voltage here be controlled from the current on this side of the circuit, uh, yeah, we need to kind of, kind of marry them together. So we click on this and say, we can set two values here. And the first value, we set to the name of this voltage source because then it will use the current flowing through this voltage source as the current to control the voltage in this circuit. And I can, I can shortly check, I click on cancel, so we can see that the current here is negative because I said this is pointing downwards in the opposite direction to this and this current. Yeah, And that's why I rotated this resistor three times to make also here the current um, looking to the right and not to the left. So if your current clamp here is showing you a current in the opposite direction, um, you can use this the, the hand tool here somewhere on top and remove the resistor, rotate it by 180 degree, uh, put it back in. But this is the current uh, negative through this voltage source. 
And so we say here, we want to have, we want to have the current measured or the current flowing through V1. And we want to have the opposite of this current. So we want to say, we want to have this current, exactly this current multiplied with a factor of one, but negative. So it's going in the opposite direction. And so then I will hit space to zoom in. I will rerun the simulation. I will delete this current here through the voltage source. And so now the blue curve in the diagram is the current here through the inductor. And so we are now copying this current as a voltage to this source. And we are applying this voltage to a one ohm resistor. So what should happen to the current here through this one ohm resistor? So once again, we take the current flowing through this source here. I will maybe use the other mouse uh, so because it's it's highlighting a little better. So we will we will use the current flowing through this source. This will generate us a voltage at this source here, and this voltage is applied to a one ohm resistor. So what should happen to the current through this resistor? It should be the very same current as here. So if I if I click on this, I should see exactly the same curve in the disk. Yeah, so the, there's a red curve showing up. The red curve is exactly on top of this blue curve. Um, so it's working. Now, this circuit here, it's a little bit like copy and paste. We have copied the behavior here and pasted the behavior to this. So this circuit will now always exactly do what, what this one does. Um, and so what we have introduced is these controlled sources. And so the next step would be to simulate the whole motor. Unfortunately, we don't have time for this, but I have prepared something. Yeah, as this old saying says, if you want to uh, have something out of your you, 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 you must have put something in before. So if you go back to this cloud storage website, there are different motor models there. There is one file, one simulation file for the characteristic curve that we also measured yesterday of the running motor. There is a simulation file for switching off the running motor. Also some experiment that I did yesterday. There is a file for switching on the block motor. And there is a model for switching on the running motor. And you can just download them if you have not done uh, so far. And you can run them and play a little bit around with them. And I will also do so. So I need to find the proper folder, which should be this one here. And I will start with switch on of the blocked motor. So this looks like this. And to explain it a little bit, um, so here's our source, like my power supply yesterday. We have the coil of the motor, of the rotor, with some inductance and some resistance. And then we have a controlled source. You can see this is also some H source for the, for the back electromotive force. And this is controlled by the speed of the motor, by the current flowing on this side. So the current on this side controls this voltage here. And here we have another source to measure the current. And this is the electric current. This controls the torque here. So we have another controlled source for the torque. And then we have some inductance on the mechanical side for the inertia of the motor and some, some other source for friction. Um, and in this case, here the resistance is very, very large. So the motor is blocked. The motor won't rotate. And if I simulate this, and if I use uh, the current probe here to measure this current, then, then we get the same behavior exponential increase that you have also seen yesterday in the experiment, if you remember, that I measured with the current probe and with the oscilloscope. OK, so what else can we do? Uh, we can measure the switch on of the running motor. So same model, different settings. Now this resistance here is very, very small. 
So the motor will rotate because there's a few friction only. And so if I run, and if I, for example, check the motor current, this is also something that I measured yesterday, if you remember. When switching on the running motor, we have this inrush current. We have this, that, that we have a, a high current peak for a short time, which happens all the time if you switch on motors that you get for a short period, you get a very strong current. Um, and then the current decreases and reaches, of course, it does not get zero, but reaches some constant plateau. And if I check the current here on the, on the mechanical side, um, this will be proportional to the speed of the motor. And this is here much larger, so I will just scale it down by a factor of 100. And then you can see, um, and this also nicely explains the behavior of the motor. So if we switch the motor on, then for a short time, it will look like this exponential increase that you have, oops, that you have seen before. And there will be a high current. And if there is a high current on the electrical side of the motor, then there will be also a torque. So if we have a current in the electrical side, there will be a torque on the mechanical side. So now if we have a torque, the motor will start to rotate, will start to turn. And once we have a speed, a revolutionary speed of the motor, we will get this back electromotive force. So we will get a voltage that then somehow limits the current. And that's why the faster the motor goes, the more the current goes down and then we reach this constant plateau. So it looks kind of similar to what we have seen yesterday. Still, it does not look exactly the same what I have measured on my oscilloscope, if you remember. So what is the difference? What can we not see here? If you compare this with what, what I've shown yesterday, what, what is the difference? How did the curve yesterday look like? Linear? No, 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 it was not linear. It was also something overshooting and then going down again and reaching some, some plateau. But if you, if you look at the results from yesterday, um, you see that the curve is much more noisy, of course, that there are some, some ripples, some noise, some jitter going up and down because yesterday it was a real measurement and measurement always has uncertainty and the, 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 the oscilloscope um, has some uncertainty and the probe. So there's some noise on the curve, something going up and down on the curve. And yesterday you could also see that there was some, some kind of oscillation on this curve that we had discussed due to the um, commutator or due to current switching from one coil to the next coil to the next coil so that the current is not as perfectly smooth as in the simulation but showing some behavior going up and down and going up and down which is not included in the model here so we, there's this quite popular famous saying all models are wrong but some are useful yeah, and so this model is not super complicated it can replicate somehow the behavior of the motor, but um, it, it does not replicate all the features of the motor uh, because we have not modeled this commutator, for example. Okay, and then the last thing that I can show, because this is also something that we uh, discussed yesterday in the measurement, is um, switching off the running motor. This is this file here. So I will run it. Um, no, this is the, for the characteristic. This is not for the switching. Switch. Where, where is it? Switch off running. Here it is. So this looks a little, little more complicated because I added a switch here to really allow for this hard switching, switching of the current. So if we run this, and check this voltage. This is what I measured yesterday also with the Le Croix voltage probe. And then you remember the curve also looked like this. So the, the motor was running, there was a constant voltage, then we switch, then there was this short transient that if you 
if you switch off this inductance here, the inductance would like to force the current to flow. Um, but it's it's there is no there's no path anymore here for the current because it's switched off. So the current needs to go some some other way, for example, over such uh, suppression capacitor. And then there is a some some short oscillation, and then the voltage will go down as the motor deaccelerates and gets slower and slower. And if we look at the speed of the motor, you can also see that here motor is constantly rotating, then we switch off, and then the motor speed almost linearly goes down. So this is something similar that, if you remember, that we've also yesterday seen in the experiment that I shown with the oscilloscope. Okay. Um, yeah, you can, if you like, I mean, also at home, you can play a little bit around with these values. I will go back to my slides. And so um, to summarize and to finish, yeah, so you are now for sure not an expert for circuit simulation, but you have you have some some idea what it can do and what it cannot do. And maybe if you in your study courses as mechanical engineers, if you have some electrical problem, then remember what I've told you about this program, and then it might be helpful um, for for this and that problem to also do a simulation in this electric circuit simulator. Still, as for all simulators and all these simulation softwares, uh, remember this garbage in, garbage out principle. So don't start with the most complicated example that you can find because it will certainly fail. Yeah? Start with simple models, networks, where you have some understanding, um, know what you are doing. Yeah? Think about, okay, if I start with this simple case, like we did, start with, started with the most simplest case and then extended it, extended it a little bit, made it more, compli more complex, more complicated, um, so that you have some idea what, what result you would expect. And if you do the simulation, does it, does it really fulfill your expectations? Question your results. Uh, don't trust everything that the computer tells you. Um, and try to validate your models for example, against measurements, as I have done yesterday, maybe against a different simulation program or against some other formulas, models, um, calculations, what, whatever you can find. Okay, so this finishes uh, my uh, talk and my lecture and our small exercise here today. Um, I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope you learned at least a little bit. Uh, I hope it did not feel too much like, uh, like a waste of time. And um, I don't know, maybe you have the chance to do some exchange, maybe with our university in Magdeburg, maybe with another uh, German university or European university. I would strongly encourage you to do so um, because you will gain lots of experience uh, traveling to other places, learning other languages, uh, getting in contact with other cultures, um, let's say. And yeah, so please, please do so. Um, and maybe come to Magdeburg. And so with, with this, uh, I, I also wish you the best of success for your further studies. Okay, excellent. So with this, um, I will also stop sharing my screen and uh, say bye-bye and also hit uh, live stream anhalten.